joined us. Uh, there's a link down in TeamSpeak. Just get on there now. Okay, Steffi's on. Jim, you're on as well. Cool. Right, okay, let's start now. So, welcome to the basic close quarters combat course. Um, don't raise your hand unless you've got a question. Um, I'll be trying to teach you today. Um, my name is Jackson. Most of you probably know me. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole introduction thingy. Um, so we're going to start straight off here. Some basic rules for the uh, for the course. Obviously, don't cheat or hack. Don't spam. Don't derp. Uh, pay attention uh, to what's being said. Um, and if you have questions here, raise your hand. If you have questions in game, press Shift and Five to uh, wave or to make the ceasefire signal. Uh, Rusty, do you have a question? I do, sir. Um, I don't know what does don't derp mean. If I don't want to get don't derp the means or... act mature and don't act like a child, and you know, you know what I mean. Okay, thank you. Cool. Well, right, let's move on. So, you, so quick, quick Jackson, course Jackson, in that. How do, you yeah. how, do you, how do you raise your hand in Scribble? Uh, there should be a raise hand function on the right um, in the chat somewhere. Okay. Yeah, it's on top of the user list there on the right side. Not seen, but that's okay. Exactly. So, a quick course index to so you know what we're going to be doing today. Um, now, quick CQC introduction at the beginning. Um, from there, we're going to move on to movement in a CQC environment. Um, uh, from there, moving over to stacking up and communication, um, then breaching, uh, room clearing, um, then we go through some other environments like stairs, uh, some other scenarios. And at the end, there'll be an optional FTX. After the um, after we're gonna go um, go through some other scenarios, um, we're gonna have a practice run where you guys get to uh, clear kill houses. Um, at the FTX itself, um, because it will most likely be after 2000 Zulu, and some of you are gonna be going over to the JTAC course. I don't expect everyone to be there, so if you have to leave after the practice runs, make sure you message me on TeamSpeak. Don't poke me, just message me on TeamSpeak and I'll give you the tag. <laughs> FTX stands field training exercise. So a live training exercise. Right. So any questions regarding this? Take that as a no. So we're going to move on to the first, uh, the first proper slide here. Um, now, what is CQC? Can anyone tell me? Raise your hand. Okay, Soviet. Close quarter combat. Or... Yeah, do you have a, a more child-friendly ex explanation to that? Um. It's when you conduct combat or uh, what's called combat drills in a close quarter environment. When you conduct combat drills in a close quarter environment, it doesn't yeah. have to be uh, combat drills. It can be um, yeah. it can be a live operation, for example. Um, anyone else got something to add, Overlord? Uh, I was basically gonna say, you know, it's uh, basically close quarters is fighting in a. Uh, smaller sort of confined area where uh, your enemy is going to be uh, very near to you. Yeah, that's uh, pretty accurate. Um, hold on. So, there you go. That's a quick sentence that I actually got from Rai, I believe it was. Um, CQC or CQB can be described as fighting in and around buildings and objects at very close distances or at very close range. But there's actually two things that we really need to think about. Um, so these two things, obviously one uh, already already kind of in that um, in that sentence up there is it's close. So close. And then we have two, uh, another important thing, which is dangerous. There we go. So close and dangerous. Always keep that in mind. 
that's when you're when you're going into a CQC situation you need to bear in mind it's always going to be close and it's always going to be very dangerous so let's move on from there so key points um, when you think of of CQC or close quarter combat what actually or what does what comes to your mind someone someone give me some give me some key key words here combat that would be um within close quarters okay so anyone else when i think cqb i think i'm clearing a building to make sure nobody's in there that's going to hurt you okay yeah breach and clear yeah another good one so let me just uh um, post this here. So, when when we're thinking about close quarter combat, the uh, key points we're going to be looking at, there they are. So, it is the most lethal form of infantry combat. That's a very good one. Um, there's no no more lethal lethal way of actually um, uh, having an infantry combat situation or whatever. Um, obviously, you have a three dimensional better ground, which means enemies could literally be everywhere um, they could be in front of you they could be behind you they could be to the left to the right or maybe even um, on top of you somewhere or may maybe even underneath you if you're for example standing in a stairway uh, something like that so you always need to have 360 uh, situational awareness now that's what we have the field of view of the, the firing arcs for when we're moving in the um, CQC environment but we'll go into more detail about that in a little bit. So in a CQC combat situation you need to bear in mind you have limited field of view and also lim limited firing arcs so there could be objects in your way um, there could be anything in your way that you might not be able to uh, see past so there could be enemies behind maybe let's say um, a wardrobe um, or it could also be um, maybe even stacked up objects that the enemy is there to conceal himself. And splash pins have the advantage; it's actually the same in armor. So if you if you're running around with a um, with a shotgun, for example, um, you might actually have the advantage because there's more actual possibilities of the rounds the rounds or um, the yeah, of the rounds actually bouncing off like maybe a wall or uh, maybe objects itself. And then there's obviously the most obvious ones, less time to react and less time, less space to maneuver. Um, that's another very important one. You don't have as much time to react as in a normal uh, combat environment. Uh, like that, that could, for example, be an enemy right in front of you is shooting out the door without you even properly noticing it. And there's less space to maneuver. We've already kind of talked about that. There's objects in your way. Um, and there could literally be everything in your way. So you always need to make, sh make sure you stay close to each other and you don't lose each other. You don't split up. Obviously, there's some situations where you might want to split up, but um, that's different scenarios. And requires 100% of your attention, and you have more cover and concealment. Now that that does work both ways. Uh, the enemy also has more cover and concealment, so it's not really an advantage, but it's also not a disadvantage. And last but not least, what Tiok likes to say: the situation dictates. Now, whatever happens, will basically lead the way. Will tell you what you're going to do. So. Okay, so these are some key points here um, to get us started, obviously. Does anyone have any questions regarding these key points? Do you want to add maybe another key point? Okay, seems pretty clear. So let's move on. What we have now... Now, th some things you need to be aware of, S some things that might make you remember things more easily. Uh, these are just just uh, a couple terms or a few terms. Obviously, s slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Now, if you're 
if you're moving basically if you're moving too slow um it's not good either if you're moving too fast it's also not good so you've got to find that point right in between where you're moving kind of slow and smoothly but where you're also kind of fast to react and where you're, where you're moving around a little uh Yeah, where you're moving around, um, basically smooth, but not too slow and not too fast. But uh, you will you will actually see that when we're doing the demonstrations later, uh, you will see what roughly is the right speed to move at, and uh, when can we take short pauses? When can we do this? When can we do that? And you're moving the known to the unknown. It's always it's always that case. So. If you could imagine it like this, if you, you, you're moving from the known, from where you are, where you know your your situation, the, the, where you have the situation awareness going, and you know what's around you, and then you're moving into a space or into an area which is unknown to you, where you don't know what's going to happen, and you don't know what's going to be there, uh, what what you're going to be facing. And then we have teamwork, and teamwork obviously also leads to communication, or communication leads to teamwork. Now, communication and teamwork are very important as well. You need to communicate with your teammates, and you need to make sure you work together to the best of your abilities. In a CQC environment, it's very important to um, actually keep these these two points very closely in mind. Um, teamwork and communication, but we're going to go over communication a little later as well. Um, in this presentation. Now that's very important. I w also later on in the exercises I want to hear you guys communicate. That's, that's an essential point in CQC. And then violence of action. Now I've put that in as well because I actually think it's very essential as well. If you're breaching a room, just as an example, if you're breaching a room you want to do it hard and you, you want to do it fast. Because if you're not doing it hard and fast, then the enemy might get a chance to shoot you before you actually get in there. So, always keep that in mind. When you're breaching the room, you want to do that fast. You don't want to pause. Uh, you don't want to stand for too long. Uh, you want to do it quickly, and you want to get in there quickly and take out the enemies as quickly as possible. So, yeah, from there we move on. We have movement. Now movement is just something that you need to be aware of, something you're going to be doing anyway, so you might as well just do it right. So when we're moving, we have the firing arcs. Now firing arcs means um, the direction that the team, team or squ squad members or fire team members are facing. That could be facing left, facing right, facing front, or facing back, or it could also be in degrees, uh, it could be... Uh, uh, for example, uh, let's say fire team member two covering 45 degrees to the left and to the right to the front. But um, that's just an example. So firing arcs, we're also going to do that in the demonstration and exercises later. We're going to go into much more detail there so you can actually see it being applied. Um, just so you know what firing arcs means and what, what you're going to be expecting. And we have the point man is in control. That's just uh, that's just what it is. The point man always takes control. The point man leads the team, and because the point man literally is at the front of the let's say a column, uh, is at the front of the maybe column, and uh, he has the most situational awareness to the front. So he will always lead the way. Um, he will act as a team leader. If, if if even if he's not a team leader, he might also be a senior senior fire team member that's leading the way. Always just keep that in mind. And if you have a chance, if you have a chance, if you're in a building, try and use the walls. Because if you're moving along a wall, you've got less area to cover. And you are actually a little more concealed as well. So if you have, let's say, you're moving through a larger room, uh, you want to try and stick to one of the walls. Do not, do not just run across the room, because that will most likely get you killed. Go ahead, Roman. Just wanted to point out that while you want to stay close to the wall, you do not want to stay in contact with the wall. If someone shoots in your direction and hits the wall, bullets will ricochet, they will follow the wall. 
if yes. someone needs to get out behind you, they can stick to the wall and go around your back without having to cross your line of fire. That's very correct. That's very correct, Roman. But also don't stay too far off the wall because that might also get you disoriented. Um, if you're being shot at, you, you want to have something that something close to you that you know you can hang on to. Uh, sorry, Robin, go ahead. Yeah, I, what he was getting at was that, in, in not in Arma, but in real life, what happens is there's a phenomenon where the uh, ricochet round will travel across the, about 12 to 14 inches off the wall. That's the reason why you don't lean against the walls. But that's in that real life. Not I'm pretty armor. sure that happens in Arma, too. Does it? Maybe, well, it then does. The physics really? Do. They, they do bounce off the walls. Nice, no, I didn't know about that. Exactly, and they don't only bounce over the walls; they also bounce off, bounce off, bounce off the floor, for example. So, um, yeah, definitely remember that. As he said, do not stick too close to the wall, but don't get off too far because you want to have something you can hang on to if you're being shot at. Um, one more thing to remember about the walls in Arma is they can hurt you. Yeah, uh, Ray's just given me um, quite a good explanation to that. It is called a ricochet zone, zone um, a two inch or elbows length space between wall and operator. Uh, that's actually very true, and that's uh, much more easily to explain that. Um, uh, so make sure you know that when, when we're going into the exercises later, do not just, you know, uh, literally. Um, be in contact with the wall at all times. You know, just just keep that elbow's length, if possible, between you and the wall. Okay, so what we also have to look at is effective bounding to get across open areas. So if you have an open area in front of you, you want to try and bound across that open area, uh, which means you send maybe uh, one at a time across, or you send two at a time across. But that's that, that's that's. Uh, as per intent, um, but always make sure you use that because if, let's say, the enemy's got an eye on that open area, uh, someone literally runs across, it'd be harder for them to hit one person uh, than actually hitting a whole team running across uh, at once. Um, that would just completely waste it. Uh, go ahead. Hey, uh, one thing that the gonna realize when you are doing that though you're also signaling the enemy um, like if you're crossing streets if you start going across you know you had really consider I mean not that doing going across one at a time or two at a time is bad but you gotta just realize there's enemy sniper out there he sees one go he sees two go he see, he gets a pattern and you gotta be careful not to set patterns in this environment exactly though this true but it's also it's also different from uh, pretty much different from environment to environment as well. So if you if you're you know, say, bounding across an open it's really field, dependent on the, it's really tactical dependent, and it's not you know on the leader of what he thinks is right for the right time. Exactly. One situation is not good for the other situation. It's something to think about, though. Oh yes, definitely. But um, yeah, uh, as you said, just just make sure you remember. Once you, once you actually get to a situation like this where you have to bound across maybe an open area, um, just try and remember that what, that what he said. Uh, do, try and not try and not give the enemy pattern, or try and not show off pattern, or try and not make pattern uh, when you're bounding across an open area, because um, that might also get you killed. And always check your corners. Uh, I can't say that too often. Um, Always make sure you check your corners. Let's say you are okay. No, no, we're going to get to that later. Actually, yeah, we're going to get to that later when we're when we're doing the demonstrations, um, where you actually see it being applied, where you might actually better understand the reason or the idea behind the uh, check corners um, key point here. And then don't split up. I said that earlier. It's pretty much uh, scenario dependent. So it could you could well want to split up, um, but generally you don't want to split up because you want to stick together. You might lose each other, and that might might make it easier for the enemy to pick you off one by one. 
and don't walk backwards. You can't see what's behind you if you're walking backwards. And you have a better situational awareness what's actually behind you if you're actually turning around uh, and walking backwards if you really have to. Uh, zoom walk. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I think you just iterated that because obviously when you make up the rear of a team, you're actually walking backwards, but you will always have people that are facing the front, so you're not losing oh, yeah. SA on that. Yeah, I might have to specify that. Um, if you are moving in a team and you've been ordered to watch watch behind the team, then you might actually move backwards. But then again, you have someone behind you then uh, watching the front. Um, so so that's that that's a different story. Lost go. Ahead. What about when you're say moving upstairs? You know, directly at the top of the stairs, there's a wall, but there could be someone on the back side of the stairs. You know, to your back. Is it okay yeah, to walk backwards up those stairs? I know what you mean. Um, we are going to get to that later when we're talking about uh, staircases and stairway scenarios. Uh, so I, I don't want to spoil that up front. Okay. Okay. Um, and short pauses. If you if you if if you really have to pause, make sure you keep these pauses short. Um, you don't want to stop for too long, and you, you don't want to stand somewhere for too long so that the enemy can more easily spot you and locate you and maybe pin you down. Um, if you have to make pauses, make sure you make sure they're short. They're really short. Now, I'm not sure what the actual standard is, if or if there's a standard um, with with the pauses um, as to how long they can be. Um, if if there is, then please do enlighten me. But um, yeah, that's what you have to look at and communicate. Uh, I said that just now, uh, the slide before this, um, and. Uh, same for check corners. I cannot say that too often. Communicate is, or well, co communication is the key here. Yeah? Um, same as speed as well. But communication is very important. But we talk about that in more detail in a second. So from there, uh, we move on to stacking up. Now, what does stacking up mean? Stacking up, you can see on the picture on the left and on the picture to the right. To the right, I don't know where it's under three people, but um, it's also situational dependent. Um, so stacking up is basically, let's say you're about to enter a room and you, you're you preparing for that. You stack up on the wall next to the door, maybe. Uh, it's also quite intent or intention dependent. But um, you normally st uh, stack up on the wall uh, make sure everyone's ready, everyone's set, and then you literally move in. So when when stacking up, the team lead, um, or if there's no, no no actual team lead, then the point man decides the structure of that of that uh, stack up. So uh, it could maybe be um, probably yeah, we can take it's pretty much like the order of March, just not. Marching, you're stacking up. So the order, the order of stacking up, uh, could be one, two, three, four. Um, in terms of the team members, um, it could also be two, three, one, four. Um, whatever the situation is, basically. And then once you get to a doorway or an opening, you make sure you 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 tighten the formation. Uh, you want to be as close as close as possible to each other, so you can move off as quickly as possible. Um, Without literally maybe one of one of the guys missing missing the moving out or whatever, you want to stay as closely as, together as possible. And then, up they. Ah, weapon gun. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um the U.S. Army has kind of gone away from stacking up on the outside, at, at least for any long period of time. Um, what we'll do is we'll approach a uh, the entry point in a uh, basically a fire team wedge, and then you burst in. The reason why they did that is they started finding out in Iraq what would happen is you'd start stacking up side outside, and if there was any obs enemy observation, they'd lose the entire fire team. But just nicely lined up. So what they started doing, the new TTP, is to actually approach the entry point in a uh, fire team wedge and then collapse at the last last second and then just go in. There we go. Yeah. And that actually it's does make TTP, sense man. as well. 
it does make sense as well. I mean, if you if you look at it that way, if you're stacking up outside a building and there's actually enemies watching you, it would be very very easy for them to just pick you off uh, when you're stacking up. So in an ideal true. situation, you would want to have uh, another element observe you from the outside from a suitable support by fire position. Anyway, right? I mean, you don't always have that luxury, but oh yeah. I know what you mean there. Yeah, um, zoom out what you just said, or I just uh, just said as well. That's actually that does actually have a have a meaning or a name, and it's called supported entry, um, as opposed to uh, unsupported. Um, but uh, that's actually true as well. Okay, so from there, once once we've stacked up on the door. And once we've tightened our formation, um, we would then we would then have to point and scope the door. So maybe have a quick peek around, or if you know what's actually in the room, and you don't have to do that peek around, then uh, it might work differently. But once the pointman goes in or scopes the door, the second man then takes up the firing arc of the pointman, which which is probably going to be the front. Um, so the second man will then look to the front while the pointman scopes the door. And then once that's been done, um, then the first man will basically say set, uh, which means that he's set. And then every literally every team member will say set until until every team member has set it. And then the first man or the point man will then say all set to make sure that everyone's ready or everyone's set, everyone's sitting there, everyone's in their position. And once that all set has been given, then we you will then obviously move on. Uh, onto onto the next task, which we're going to get to now. Actually, no, that wasn't right. But uh, I was going to do breaching first. But um, communication. Let's quickly go over that. Um, now, communication is the goddamn key. Um, I've said it in every every training session that I've done so far. Make sure you communicate, and I cannot say that too often. And I also want really want to see you do that once we actually get to the practice sessions. Um, now, by communication, we mean obviously communicating with your team, um, speaking to them, you know, making sure that they know what you're doing. So I've just listed a few random words that just that, that just came to my mind when I did this. Um, so you can see some some some. Saying or, or some terms on the left and on the right, um, and we will also go into more detail when we do the demonstration later. You will actually hear us communicate, us uh, instructors and assistants, and you will actually see how it's done properly uh, with the use of communication, obviously. So, okay, let's move on from there quickly. Uh, so, we get to breaching now. So we have uh, actually four things I want to go over here. We've got the fatal funnel. I'll, I'll go over that in a second. Um, I, we obviously also speak about body team breaching or fire team breaching. It's two different things. And very important when breaching, speed is key. Um, that's very, very important. Like I said earlier, sort of like violence of action. Um, you want to do it quickly and you want to do it hard. You want to completely give it to the enemy, not give it to the enemy, but completely show them how it's done. So, fatal funnel. Does anyone know what that means? Raise your hand. Go ahead, Overlord. It, uh, I believe it refers to a hallway or a uh, doorway and being stuck there and your impending death. I have a uh, friend in the uh, Miami SWAT. He refers to them as uh, coffins. Sorry. Yeah, I did actually. I did actually hear that before. Um, coffins, and it does refer to that weapon. Do you want to add something? Sorry. The, the fatal funnel is basically referring to any types of point. Like, for instance, when you're you're coming into a door, it's usually a doorway, and it's the place that you want to get past quickly because the enemy is going to be directing all fire towards the entry point. Fatal Planet is not necessarily has to be a door, it could be a window, it could be um, yeah. a mouse hole that you've created. But basically what it is, is you want to get through that point as quickly as possible because of the vulnerability for all enemy fire will be directed. 
Very correct. Smokely? Uh, so I'm guessing it's just like a, a choke point where guys are, multiple guys are going to be moving through, leaving them vulnerable. Very, very exact, yeah. But as, as weapons already said, it is, it is, it could maybe, just to give you an example of what a fatal funnel could be, let's say you're moving into a room, now that would be your, your, your door, obviously. So, moving through that door, you want to get out of that as quickly as possible before the enemy starts picking you off. Or, uh, as Raya has just said it, a cone, uh, as opposed to linear shaped zone of which you and your team are in danger within. It's a funneled and channelized piece of architectural terrain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, then we have two different types of breaching. Um, sometimes there might even be another type, which is uh, squad breaching. If if it's a larger area, you're breaching um, with multiple entrances. But what we're looking at, obviously now, is buddy team breaching and fire team breaching. If we're in a building and you have a room in front of you, there's two different ways to breach it. You can breach it in a buddy team. Well, another buddy team maybe takes care of another room that is maybe connecting to that. And we have fire team breaching. Fire team breaching is obviously a whole fire team breaching through the same doorway or the same entrance. So, yeah, yeah. One thing, what they're just talking about is very important as well. When breaching, you you don't want to you don't want to throw a grenade in armor. You don't want to do that because it will more easily get all of you killed um, than actually killing the enemy unless you really know the mechanics and you really know how to throw a grenade. But that takes a lot of uh, a lot of exercise and a lot of trying, and we're not going to teach you that today. Uh, how to throw a grenade into a room, and it's very, how should I say, very impossible as well. Because when you throw a grenade, it will first bump up, and it will kind of probably hit a probably hit the ceiling in front of you. So um, doing that in armor is a complete no go. Well, something I wanted to ask about is the. Uh utilization of flashbangs in the armor. It is, I feel like, uh, I mean, are the AI even affected by the flashbangs? I'm actually not sure. Does anyone know? The AI yeah. are actually affected by flashbangs in most cases. Okay. Right, um, but like I said before, <laughs> if you if you can avoid it, don't throw a grenade. Don't do it. Um, if you do want to throw a grenade, then I suggest you do it in the exercise later and see what happens. Yeah, a, uh, J sorry, Jackson. A, uh, a, uh, new, new is currently working on a new system for grenades that are going to dynamically change armor as far as the way you throw grenades and more accuracy. Uh, it's going to be way better if you if you if you've actually seen the video. Yeah, I've actually heard about it. I haven't seen the video itself, but um, I've actually heard about that he's actually working on something, and I'm definitely looking forward to that, seeing that this could really improve armor in a way that we can actually uh, utilize flashbangs and stuff. Um, in it's going to be dynamic. It really is. It's, uh, I've seen it uh, later. Well, I'll link you guys to it. Is that, is that new doing that, or is that Shaq Tactical? It, 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 it came from Shaq Tac and... Uh, Shaq Tack has pushed it to New because they, he just basically he doesn't have time to develop it. So New wanted to take it over, and he's working on it right now. Yeah, that's probably the link, isn't it? I believe there's uh two parts to the video. Yeah, New's actually working on it, so now you can start tossing magazines at each other, too. <laughs> that's pretty funny, but um, uh. I suggest, or I, I expect you to actually watch that later, because we just want to finish off that uh, presentation, so we can start yeah. doing a few exercises and demonstrations, because we are actually quite uh, uh, time-bound here. So, yeah, body team breaching, very simple, it's a body team breaching, two people, um, and fire team breaching, could be four people breaching uh, through the same entrance. Okay, let's move on from there. So here are a few scenarios. We will show you how these are done in the demonstrations that we're about to do on the server. Um, so just to quickly go over these so you actually understand 
uh, what is being done in these images in these um, in these examples so top left we have the areas of responsibility it's just an explanation of what that could mean so let's say your buddy team breaching one and two and you then breaching the room one goes to the left hand side straight into the left corner and two, two goes um, to the right hand side straight into the right hand corner now that could be the areas of, of responsibility responsibility they could be set um, by the team lead may be saying something like one will take the left hand side of the room two will take the right hand side of the room for example um, just so you understand what that means the AORs and then we have uh, just another example crossover crossover I wouldn't recommend an armor because you will you could literally get stuck and um, I wouldn't do that but it's just so you know what that looks like what that means so crossover you literally cross over each other and and take take the opposite corner of where you where you're entering from what uh, what would be the benefits of performing that maneuver so I uh, my main concern with that would be uh, crossing your uh, partner's muzzle is never a good idea yeah um, uh, that is actually, thing. yeah, it, it is, Whoa. and it's basically. Let's say, just to give you a good example of how how that could be beneficial. Let's say it's it's an open it's an open doorway. It's, it's literally an opening in the wall, and two stacks up on the uh, on the right hand side of that entrance, and one on the left hand side. So one could literally peek through that um, through that opening in the wall and see what's happening on the right hand side of the room while two can see what's happening on the left hand side of the room roughly so that would be quite beneficial because they know what's going on there so it would but, um, essentially uh, allow them to uh, observe the space they're about to be moving into for better safety I guess exactly kinda not removing that but, but reducing the moving from the known to the unknown kinda reducing it a little bit, re reducing the risk um, but again I, I, I wouldn't recommend using that in armor because uh, in armor it will get you stuck. Um, in real life, you might be able to co coordinate um, better so that you don't get stuck. But still, that's just one of these uh, one of these scenarios that um, you're kind of thinking about: should we do it? Should we not do it? Okay. Yeah, it's called splitting the door. Yeah. So, for instance, yeah, basically you're uh, checking the room from both directions. Um, clearing your far corners before moving in. So basically, you're isolating the area you have to clear. Yeah, that's a good explanation. Yeah, let's move on from there. Same side entry. Um, that's actually one that you can definitely use in armor. Um, let's say it's also an opening. Uh, it's also an opening and you have one and two moving on the right hand side of the room before you enter this room um, and you don't want to cross that opening because the enemy might see you so you want to stack up on the right hand side of the wall together because you're both on that side already uh, that could just be an example and then you're literally moving in together and you're literally moving in together and from there you can then specify the areas of responsibility if you know that there's another room connecting to that room uh, you might then have uh, one covering the left hand side which means the majority of the room you're moving into uh, and two covering the right hand side and also the opening or, or the door to the connecting room lost an example like that would two move sort of side and backwards how do you mean side and backwards well if one is covering the majority of the room, two is having to turn around immediately once they're in position to watch oh, that yeah. doorway. Basically, you have your firing arcs. Um, when you're moving, generally, you always have your firing arcs. Uh, or areas of responsibility in this, in, this, in this case now, when you're moving into the room. So you, you literally have one covering the left of the room and the front, um, which which makes it kind of useless if two would also be covering that so you, you might have two moving kind of sideways um, so, so he can cover the other side of the room okay. splitting the door yeah. so yeah uh, let's move on to the bottom left one pie slice 
Pi Stars is quite a good one actually. It basically what you do, you could literally have a whole fire team stacked up, and then you have one of these fire team members basically checking the room through the door. Or, um, uh, hold on. Okay, sorry, uh, poke. Right, um, yeah, you could literally have one peek through the opening and see what's happening in the room by using a kind of pie slice uh, form, uh, pie slice form of that. Yeah. Um, and that will get you a great, great insight into what's happening where you're moving into. Um, now, I especially like that one, and I, I, I really like to see you guys do that in, in the exercises. Maybe try and utilize it. Maybe try and use that somehow, um, because it is really beneficial for yourselves uh, to actually see what's going on in the room before you're moving into it. But always be careful when doing that. Okay, uh, we move on to wall hanging. Now, wall hanging is literally holding onto a wall or hanging ha hanging onto a wall uh, when you're moving in uh, moving along the walls to get to the other side of the room uh, which means you, you just don't let go of the walls and you keep moving until you get to the other side of the room and until you meet each other again and that's one of these scenarios where say splitting up is alright that's because you're, you're, you're all inside a room and you're not moving away from each other too much uh, Soviet. Even better for one to uh, wall hang on the right and two to wall hang on the uh, left since uh, one will go in there first. Uh, it's an option, you know, it's an option. But uh, it, it, again, that's that literally after the uh, after the appointments or the team leader's intent, um, and it will most likely be specified before entry. Yeah, and then we have the highs and lows, um, which is quite nice as well. If you have a corner, um, or uh, yeah, literally a corner, mostly or most likely 90 degrees corner of maybe a building or maybe a wall in a hallway, um, you could you could maybe use this scenario where you literally have one and two stacked up um, side to side uh, and literally peeking around the corner. Um, that could be. And that could be quite beneficial as well, because if there's enemies around the corner, then you could actually have uh, one support two or two support one, maybe taking out these enemies before you literally all move around the corner and all risk, your, risk yourselves, basically. Okay, so these are just six scenarios that we will demonstrate in-game as well. Um, right, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the areas of responsibility one. Um, they're doing two separate techniques, by the way. The number one guy, he's doing a button hook, and number two, he's doing a modified or straight entry, or whatever you want to call it. Just oh, yeah, in case you didn't know that. Yeah, maybe I should have noticed that as that. Maybe I should have noticed that as well. Um, there's there's different ways of entries. Um, as he's already said, one. Uh, what one is doing on the top left there is a button hook because uh, you're literally moving in the form of a hook kind of um, uh, while two literally does a straight entry um, or, or as he said a modified entry or a modified straight entry and what is so Yeah. As Loss has just posted, there is a room clearing procedures threat. And you could literally uh, look at that maybe after the course. Um, you know, there's there's a couple of videos in there that uh, you might want to watch. What, what you can always do, what I always recommend um, after this course, because I don't want to go into too much detail, it's only a basic course. Uh, ba basic CQC course. Don't want to go into too much detail and stretch it for too long. Um, 
but there's always extras that you can that you can learn that you can improve your knowledge on and I recommend going onto YouTube and maybe looking at some CQC videos or room clearing videos or uh, or the like um, whoever just uh, raised their hand ask go ahead ask no, I just wanted to, uh, to mention oh. that especially the slicing the pie or the pieing method on the left is it, it's a very universal uh, um, technique that is very, very um, effective if you have the time, if you're not highly dynamic to actually any vertical type of structure you encounter as in that provides any sort of cover or concealment um, to actually slice that pie. So you, you, you progressively move your angle so that you expose only pie slices of yourself uh, with a further angle you move so you just you, you peek around the corner and other uh, ang you know a little bit and then you increase that a little bit progressively and thereby you know you limit your own exposure and you can concentrate on the further added angle or sector and thereby you know uh, increase your survivability and at the why you do that you obviously want to expose as few of your yourself as possible and I think that's a very universal applicable technique. You can even do that on a street level if you pick around a street corner, very usable technique. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's true. And it, most of these or most of these scenarios here listed here, these examples are very dynamic. Um, so they could be used for different scenarios. Um, it's just it's just to get you an it's, you get you an example, and so you know you actually know the terms, know what they are, what they stand for, what they mean, in case we use them in the exercises later, and we say. Uh, uh, we say two pie slides the room, or uh, we say one and two uh, highs and lows, for example, on that corner. Um, it could it could literally be everything, just so you know that you, what we mean by these terms when we're saying that. Um, right? Can you talk? Yeah, I can talk. Okay, if you can, can you quickly go over staircases? Because um, my phone keeps ringing, and it's actually something really important. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What now? Yeah, if you can. Okay, sweet. Let's have a look at the note. So from Thorks, T Hawks. Let me have a look at this. Don't we have images on that for here as well? I think we have. That was the worst time crash ever. All right. Huh? A crash. My TV no. crash. Those fail. Um, fail. Basically, if you break it down, you've got different types of stairs. So you've got a linear stairwell, which is obviously straightforward. Um, you've got a switchback, which is basically uh, everyone sees it. It's in like Cindy stuff like that. Uh, you go up to your initial landing and then spin around and go up some stairs again to your secondary landing. That's called a switchback. Um, and you've got spiral, which I've never seen and I won't talk about it. Um, uh, you can break those up into long and short, just like you can rooms. Obviously dictates the speed you move and stuff like that. So judging by Thorpe's plan, he says, secure the base of the stairs and scope up. So obviously it's very important to secure the base of the stairs because that's your footprint for actually going up the stairwell. And scope up, I don't know what he means. I suppose he means just actually placing a cover man there um, to secure your initial landing. Um, so he says about moving up the stairs, t Hog says, clinging to a wall. I'm not 100% sure about it, but it's pretty actually good to cling to the outside wall so you virtually pie around that initial landing. Um, so 
with stairs, it's basically a 720 degree environment, you could call it. You're literally covering to your front and above you at the same time. So there is quite a lot of methods around that. Um, you've got subtypes of stairways yet again, called closed top and open top. Open top would mean um, there's an actual landing above you, like it's open. And closed top would mean that it's like bricked off, like it's not a threat to you whatsoever. You understand what I mean? Are you changing slides? No, nope. I'm back now. I'm back now. Um, I've just given um, Ryan and Zumok. I've just given you both admin. Zumok asked me so you can you can draw down some some scenarios maybe or 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 do something to actually demonstrate it on here. If not, we're still going to do the demonstrations later, and there will actually be um, a staircase that we can we can demonstrate how to properly do it um, in front of uh, all the attendees. Okay, sweet. Cool. Uh, Zumok, are you still are you still going to do something? Well, I don't know. I mean, if you if that's already concluding the staircase yeah. part, then oh yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can. We can demonstrate it later as well. Yeah, I think the best way to look at it is really in the game where you actually see the staircases instead of having yeah, some definitely timers. Exactly. So yeah, um, that's actually the last one as well. Um, not like I said before, it's it's only basic course, so don't don't expect to go into too much detail here. It would teach you the basics and maybe some advanced stuff, so you, that you can actually commit to a or to successfully completing or successfully ending a CQ, CQC uh, situation where you may be clearing a house, uh, so you can actually use that on a primary. Um, to obviously get along with that and make sure you you clear your house successfully without causing too many um, uh, too many injuries or whatever. So there's not a written test, is there? <laughs> There'll be a written test. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I need you all to get onto the server now. Um, what we're going to do now. We're going to demonstrate a few situations and show you exactly how it's done, what to what to look for in the situations, what to actually... Which servers should we enter? Training one. Okay. Same password. Yeah. Waffles. Uh, waffles. waffles. Okay, thank you. Okay, just uh, get on there, everyone. I'll be getting on myself. Um, in the slot screen, make sure you slot uh, blue for infantry. No instructor slots. Uh, the assistants, I'd appreciate it if you could go into maybe fire team leader slots or squad leader slots. Actually, more the fire team leader slots. 